here beneath the streets of Washington, they built the world's newest underground railway system. The whole thing's controlled by computers. There are no queues for tickets, no clerks to issue them, or inspectors to punch them. Significantly, you see very few railway men or women. Washington Metro, a railway of the future built now for the city's commuters. Again, the only humans in evidence are the passengers. It's clean, modern, efficient. The energy, the work, the bulk of the responsibility to provide such a service, it all comes from computers. Computers don't only monitor the fare and ticket collection, but they also control the trains themselves. They're almost fully automatic. The computers regulate the speed. What time they arrive at the station, they apply the brakes and start the train up again. If anything goes wrong, then they'll automatically cut everything off. And there are even computers which monitor those computers. Electronic machines do most of the work. It was possible to persuade the unions to accept such low staffing levels because this was a purpose-built railway, completed only a few years ago. There was nothing here before. Call me back on that fire alarm. Hello. Station. Exit's on G Street at 7th and 9th. Roger, Thornton, Newmont. Now, it would be possible for passengers like me to be the only human beings involved, but as you've just heard, there is one person on board the train, because they've deliberately built in a human factor. People like to know that there's people with people. So we have a computerized system to the edge of the state of the art, but then we always have a human being that you can contact. In the mezzanine, there is always a person that you can ask for directions. Or if one of the machines goes down or goes bad, then he can make minor repairs. In the head of the train, the train announcements are made with a real live human being, even though we're capable of making it computerized. What's the real significance of using new technology on this? Is it, I mean, is it a pointer to what everything's going to be like? In the it future? makes it safer. It makes it more even of operation. It makes it cheaper than hiring hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people whose salaries go up continually through the ages, whereas the machinery doesn't. But it gives a wider horizon, wider mobility to the people themselves. Computers made it possible for Washington to afford its new railway. That's because the cost of running it will remain stable. People are the most inflationary feature of any business. Their wages only move in one direction up. Once you've paid for a machine or a computer, that's it. So while London's tube travelers will always pay ever-increasing fares, the costs in Washington will be less influenced by staff wage bills. It's the benefit of having fewer people at work. <laughs> Step back to 